allow anybody to define who you are or tell you who you are, who you're not. My name is Melanie McReynolds, PhD. It's kind of exciting to say that now, although it's almost two years later. Um, I'm originally from a small town in Mississippi known as Louisville, Mississippi. I'm a chemist trained biologist. And right now my role is a postdoctoral research associate here at Princeton University. So last year I did a thing. I wrote a few grants and I got those few grants. And I can say that I'm funded by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and the Burroughs Weapon Fund. So it's absolutely an honor to be known as one of the 2018 Hannah Gray Fellows and PDEP Fellows. Growing up in rural Mississippi, it's, to me, it's beautiful to conquer the academy. I believe rep representation matters and it's important to see people who look like you. So growing up in the underprivileged quote unquote area, it's important for me to have students in those areas to see someone like me to have made it in the academy. So I'm chasing tenure. I want to be a professor. I want to have my own research conquer, um, my own research agenda, train, mentor students from all over, and to really um, expand scientific discovery. Math and science has always been intriguing to me, but I was always disadvantaged with the resources to really explore science and to get a hand-on feel of what science is and what it can encompass. Um, so for me, it's important for me to continue in this role to be a representation and to show other children all over the world, especially from inner city areas and rural communities, that no matter who you are, where you're from, you can accomplish any dream that you set out to accomplish. So that's the reason why I'm chasing tenure. That's the reason why I want to be a scientist and I want to allow exposure so the world can see and people can see what I'm doing, what am I about, and to see that all things are possible and nothing is impossible. I attended Alcorn State University, which is um, the first land grant HBCU located in Southwest Mississippi. Alcorn was a family school. All of my family went there prior to me, my mother, my father, et cetera, et cetera. Going to Alcorn, although Alcorn had limited resources, the university understood that. And it was important for all of the students to participate in summer research internship programs. So I started doing summer research every year and early exposure was the key for me. And going from University of Virginia, Bangalore, India, and all across the world doing research, I learned the ins and outs of science and realized that science, that there was a career within scientific discovery. That exposure uh, led me to wanting to learn more about this as a career. From there, I participated in the Bridges to the Doctorate program between Alcorn and Penn State for my master's. And I always call this experience a time where I was able to put a life jacket on in the water and not drown, transitioning from a small university, university to a large scale university and more research driven. Um, Bridges was the best decision of my life. I was able to see, be seen, learn the ropes, and really learn how to maneuver in that type of space. And after Bridges, after my time with my master's, I continued on at Penn State and I completed my degree at Penn State. And a lot of ups and downs. One challenge that I always enjoy talking about is my candidacy exam as a PhD student. I was so ready, I was so, my candidacy exam came in four parts. A chalk talk of my research, um, a presentation of a random paper that they gave us, a critique of that paper, and then also I had to write up a summary of the research that I was going to propose. Three out of those four components I did absolutely wonderful on. However, I absolutely bombed my chalk talk and I had to repeat it. But think about being told that you did all of this, but we want you to come back and repeat this and try again. But having all of your friends outside with balloons, with cakes, and at that time I was the center of the black community. So everybody named Mama was there, you know what I mean? And that was like one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. However, me having to go back and redo that chalk talk, I learned everything about my science. 
everything about my research, but no one could ever challenge me again. No one could ever question me on what I know and what I could do and who I was in that moment. And to this day, my research has been ever evolving since graduate school. And I really count that moment as a blessing because I'm still chasing those same questions. I'm still answering those same hypotheses that I had since 2011, 2012, 2013, and it's 2019 now. Um, so those are one of the challenges that I face. And in that moment, I learned not to ever give up and not to allow anybody to ever determine your destiny or what you have for you. And although you may go through mistakes, those mistakes are only there to make you stronger. You don't grow where you're comfortable. And I had to become better. I had to be able to conquer the chalk talk. I had to know everything about my science for me to be where I am now. Over the last year, uh, I read a devotional, actually, a 365-day devotional entitled, He Whispers My Name, um, written by Cherry Hill. And a lot of times when we're going through something new, so as for me, I was transitioning into a new lab, starting my postdoctoral work, trying to gain my independence here at Princeton, you have to speak over yourself and encourage yourself a lot. So with this devotional, I was able to do that. During this last year, while writing those grants, getting my research established, I really learned the true meaning of walking by faith and not by sight. Because when you walk by sight, you see all the things that are impossible. But when you walk by faith, you know that all things are possible and nothing is impossible. But with that said, faith without work is dead. You can't not do, you cannot have faith and not do the work. And you cannot do the work without having the faith. With reading this devotional, I also understood the true meaning behind the old proverb, where God guides, he provides, and when God ordains, he sustains. So this really enlarged my strength and kept me going. I also learned how valuable having your peace is. Living alone, you learn, it could be scary at first. I always enjoy people around me, but coming to a new area, I was here straight by myself and I had to live, you know, I had to be alone, but now I really enjoy that peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding is so valuable. And then you really learn that peace is just not a feeling, but it's a state of being. And this devotional also helped me to really understand that although we go through the fire, we come out as pure gold. And finally, where there is fear, there's no faith. And where there's faith, there's no fear. With what I'm doing and what I was conquering, I needed to be able to read this devotional um, in order to um, strengthen this, my spiritual nature to really have the faith necessary to tackle all of the obstacles, all the aggressions and everything that I face every day and to remove any mountain that came into my way. And as I mentioned, I was able to write those grants. I got those grants. And if it wasn't for that daily devotional and really encouraging myself, I don't think I, all of that would have been possible because I really had to step out on faith. I want to be a motivational speaker, you know what I mean? I love to encourage. I love to support others. I want to train the multitude. The, I want to train the next generation of scientists. I want to do it all. And I feel like being a professor, I'm in that space to do everything. But most importantly, uh, I have this, uh, a, a, I have this calling with my friends, with my classmates from undergrad, with the people who I went to grad school with, and the people I've been on this journey with. And it's called the Alcorn Research Connection. And it's basically a contingent of Alcorn faculty, students, and most importantly, alumni who are interested in advancing mankind through scientific research and discovery. And we all are on our way, we're all chasing academia, and we feel like together, we can really advance mankind through our research and our endeavors. Ultimately, one day, maybe we can build a huge biomedical research facility in Mississippi, which could change lives, you know. Um, what advice do I wanna leave you all with today after watching this interview of getting to know Dr. Mel? Never first, never to allow anyone else to define your limitations. Always know who you are, your destiny, and to know your purpose. Never allow anybody to minimize you. Uh, secondly, everywhere you go, whatever chance you get, always plant your seeds. You wanna plant your seeds everywhere you can because your seeds are going to be, later be your harvest. But also know with that, 
that when the rain and the storm comes, instead of being mad at the rain, be thankful for the rain because the rain is going to sprout your seed. So when your harvest comes, you're going to have a lot to eat. And finally, I would just say, know that this is your time. Know that you are destined for greatness and always to let your little light shine. All things are possible, nothing is impossible. You're in the academy for a reason, you're in graduate school for a reason, you have your degree for a reason. And if you wanna do this, it's possible. I hope you all have a blessed day and thank you so much for watching 